Hello folks, Scrimper UK here. I've got something really different for you today. I'll bet you can't guess what this is. Anyway, I'm going to move the camera out a bit and all will be revealed. Have you got it yet? Look, it's got a big handle at the back. Look at it. I wonder what it is. I wonder what it is. If you're a woodworker, you may know. Massive handle. It's a mitre guillotine. And it's an amazing piece of equipment. It's massive construction, it really is massive, it's built like a battleship. I bought this at least 30 years ago, I can't remember exactly when, when I was at a traction engine rally. And I saw this on a stall and I've always wanted a mitre guillotine, but they were ever so expensive. I think I paid him £70 for it, but I mean it's a massive heavy thing, it's a nightmare lifting it. I did have to take it apart to get it in the car. And what I thought I'd do, I'd just show you how well it's built and what it does. Well first of all on the back you've got this massive handle. It's like something off a traction engine. I'm going to take it off and show you because it is really amazing the quality of the thing. There's a big nut there. You take that nut off and then this handle lifts off. But it's so heavy. I'm going to job to lift it. Oh look at that. There you go. Okay. To move. I don't know if I'd love to move the camera. It's so big you won't be able to see it. I mean, it's really quality, this thing. I weighed this, and it's something like 10 kilograms just for the handle. And you can see it's even got this winding lever on as well. It's, it, it really does look like something off a traction engine, actually. It's just real quality. And it's got a lovely feel about it when you're using it. I mean, that's just a handle. I and mean, you look at the size of the gear on it. It's an incredible piece of equipment. Anyway, that's the handle. We'll just put that down a moment, because it's rather heavy, and I don't want to break it. And I'm going to take the knife block out and show you that as well. This is very very heavy and very dangerous. There we go. I'll put it down there and then you can see it better. This is the knife block and straight away you'll see there's two large dangerous looking knives here and they are really really sharp and I mean sharp they're like razors and I've never sharpened those that's just as it was when I bought it. As you, it's massive construction again. I, I weighed this thing uh, on my scales and again it was over 10 kilograms for just this piece. You can see there's a massive gear on the bottom here, along here, for the cog to run into. It really is quality and everything's all bolted together with massive nuts and bolts as you can see here so everything comes apart. These are the nuts that take the knife off and this is the piece that runs in the channel at the back and I'll turn it around and show you that in a moment but I'll leave that off because it makes the thing a bit lighter to handle because it's a blooming heavy thing to move about. I had a job to get it up on the bench to show you. If you look at the, if I can move the camera a bit more, sorry about all this camera movement, folks. The amazing thing about this piece of equipment is the quality of it. Um, first of all, you've got the fences here, and I've got these locked at 45 degrees. Simple reason is I never move them. You can move them, you've got these slots here on both sides, so you can move them around so you can have them at any angle you want. And to get to them, you have to turn the thing over. I'll turn it over so you can see. And it, it's, it's again, it's quality underneath. You've got these levers, great big hefty like vice levers. The idea you just turn, loosen those and then you can move the, the, the rests around. But to be honest, it is such a job setting them up and getting them right. I just leave them at 45 degrees and don't use them for anything else. So that's that. Also, again, another useful thing on it but I don't touch it once it's set, it's best to leave it, is these here, the, these rods that go down and hold the top of the, the rest, or arm, whatever you want to call it, I don't know what you call it, I'll call it a rest anyway, um, they, they're, they're, they've got a knurl on the top and there's a screw on the front, you loosen that screw and then you can get a, some grips on here and turn it, and they're on, on a cam, so what it does, it moves this backwards and forwards so you can get it at the right angle so it's completely at right angles to the actual table. The table, by the way, is massively built. If I can move the camera in a little bit more, you might be able to see how thick it is. I'm not sure, but if you look down through the slot, you can see it's about five eighths of an inch. Half an inch, what, 13 and a half mil is that in English? Sorry, in metric rather. Uh, it's about five eighths in British measurements. 25 mils about an inch, so I suppose it's about 13 and a half, 14 mil thick. It's really thick quality. And you can see it's a nightmare to get it at the right, the right angle. So that's why I leave it when I've got it set on 45 degrees uh, for motors. I leave it. You can tell if you look closely down here. 
it's been bashed and I think what's happened is when somebody's wanted to adjust it and it's such a job to adjust so precise and I think they've used a hammer and they've just clouted it here because you can see marks on the table where it's been clouted and the same on this side it's it's marked there as though it's been clouted and it is very difficult getting these set right so I imagine they tightened it up and then to fine tune it they used a hammer which is a, a better way of doing it because if it's loose it's very difficult to set up I'll, I'll just turn it round and you can see the back. Well, I couldn't actually turn it round. It's so heavy, I couldn't move it on the bench. But the only thing I could do is tip it upside down so you can see. You can see here, along here is a groove for the channel which the knife bar runs in and there's a similar channel under there. Um, you can see it, the construction is massive. Even the gear wheel has a little shroud, a brass shroud around it to protect the gear from dirt and everything. There's the hole where the wheel goes in. Anyway, what I'll do, I'll turn it back up and I'll put it back together and show it working. Right, I've got it back together again. My God, that was hard work. I think I need to go and lie down a bit before I do any more. Anyway, I've got the thing back and I'm going to show you how it works. The idea is, rather than using a square end of a piece of wood like that and putting it in and chopping it off, that puts a lot of effort on the... The blades and it's not the right way to do it there's two ways of doing it you can either using a a, a tenon saw or a normal hand saw or a band saw or whatever cut your your mitre to approximately what you think it should be it doesn't have to be exact it can be anywhere near and and start from that because that way it makes it much easier for the tool to slice it off and I'm just gonna do I know you can't see this because I'll move the camera around in a minute I'm gonna slice this one off that's one bit you can hear the nice swish as the machine cuts there you go now if you look how smooth that's lo lovely and smooth it's it's almost like metal the finish it leaves on there I've missed a little bit there and I'll put it in once more That's better. Now you can see what a, a perfect cut that makes. Really, really smooth cut. Um, you can do it from a square piece, but as I say, the best way is to put it on and just nibble a bit at a time. Um, so you can like that bit. See, I've just cut a little tiny bit off and you just work your way down, but it's much easier just to saw it off what you need first of all. You can do it on this side. It depends on the molding. Uh, you can use either side to cut. I suppose you could have them set at different angles if you required it, but there you go. There we are. Now I'm just going to move the camera so I can show the actual knife working. Hope this is clear. It's a bit of a job getting in to see it because I've got to have my hands to hold the wood. Uh, but I, what I've done, I've just trimmed the end of this on the bandsaw to make it a bit rough and round. I've done the same on the other end, and then I can show you how to cut it off. I'm going to use this side of the machine so that the, the uh, camera's pointing that way, the other side will be a bit in the dark. So basically all you need to do is put the wood in and, and just push it in far enough to make a starting cut. I'm just going to trim the end off first. It's a bit awkward doing it this way, I'm sort of the wrong way around. Now I'll cut the first cut off, but you can see it's not right, so it's better to do it in small bits. You can do it very quickly, just like that. This should be the last cut. There we go. And there you are, you see his finished result and it's really, really smooth and, and gives a, well it's like metal actually the finish. I'll do the same with this side so you can see it again. Like I said you could cut it off in one foul sweep but it's better to do a bit at a time really. I'll shut up a minute you can hear the noise it makes. It's a very satisfying tool to use actually. It's very heavy and I'll tell you what, I wouldn't want to get my finger in there because it would cut your finger off in a flash. And it's so sharp and there's so much pressure you can put behind it. It's, it's probably more dangerous than a bandsaw actually, so you've got to be very careful. Um, but I think you'll agree, it's a really nice machine to have. Uh, you can, the point about it is, you can slice a tiny amount off. It's very difficult, if you made this and you wanted to cut a sixteenth of an inch off, you'd have a heck of a job to do that with a hand tool and you'd certainly, even with a band saw, you'd have a job. You could do it with a radial arm saw, I suppose, and I will show you how to do that in a later video because I plan to cover radial arm saws. But this machine will actually take off a tiny, tiny, tiny sliver of wood, so like a sixteenth of an inch. You have to hold it firm there to stop it moving, but now I've just taken a sixteenth of an inch off there, look. 
Anyway, I think it's a really nice machine. Uh, as I say, you can buy these. I've seen them advertised. Not like this. I have no idea how old this is. If anybody knows how old this machine is, I'd be pleased to know. There is a number on there, and it says 8049. Now, whether that means 19... It can't be 1949. This looks too old for that to me. And I can't think it could be 1880, but I suppose it could. I have no idea. I've never seen one like it before. There are modern ver versions, and they sell at like £1,000 or more. Uh, there is one called the Lion Mitre Trimmer, I believe, um, which was, I think, about £200, the latest price I saw for that. 150 to 200 anyway. But it's nowhere near built like this thing. This is just built like a brick chicken house. But it's a, it's a real heavy thing to move. I struggled to get it over here on the bench. I took it all apart, and I've had because I've got it in a different position, but I moved, had to move it by the window so I could show you it working because of the lights. It's a bit dark over the other side of the workshop. And I've got to get the damn thing back now. I think I'll get the wife in. She'll do it. She's tougher than me. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, I hope any woodworkers out there that found it of a little bit of interest. Um, I don't suppose it's of much interest if you're not into woodworking. But, I mean, surely you must appreciate the quality of the thing. I just wish I knew who made it. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Um, and do subscribe. Bye for now.